Hey guys, this is Slyman. Today I will be reviewing the Bresser slash Explore Scientific 70 degree apparent field of view IP set. Um, there's really not much more uh, by way of introduction, so let's jump right into it. All right, so to start things off today, I just wanted to clarify one thing. Uh, the reason why I introduced these as Bresser slash Explore Scientific is because all of mine are Explore Scientific. Notice the, the stamp is Explore Scientific. Uh, all of the dust caps are Explore Scientific. But I've had these eyepieces for a very long time. So nowadays, they're actually under the Bresser brand. Um, back in the past, they were under the Explore Scientific brand. So they're the exact same eyepieces. Um, if you buy them nowadays, you'll buy them as Bresser. Um, if you bought them a few years ago, they would be Explore Scientific. All right, well, with that clarification made, um, let's go ahead and jump right into this. So the three two-inch eyepieces that the set comes with are the 35, the 30, and the 25 millimeter. Um, and the three one and a quarter inch eyepieces the set comes with are the 20, the 15, and the 10 millimeter. Now all of these have an apparent field of view of 70 degrees and they are all fully multi-coated. Uh, they all have the, the rubber eye, eye guard here that you can um, pull up on them and I mean that's kind of standard for, for any eyepiece you would hope they have them. So they do have the rubber, the rubber eye cups and they are all of the Urfil design. Now I'm not sure if I say that that name right, so that's just how I'm going to pronounce it. Um, but the Urfil design is a five-element uh, design, so it consists of five lenses. These eyepieces are actually my primary go-to set. Um, a lot of people will go for you know like an 82 millimeter series or 100 100 degree series. Uh, but those increased in cost pretty significantly. This is actually a really great IP set for the price that you can get them for. Um, that being said, the Urfeld design doesn't really do that well in fast telescopes. So if you have a fast telescope or a telescope with about a focal ratio anywhere from f4 to f5 to even f6, these probably aren't the best eyepieces for that. And the reason is, just inherent in the Urfel design, the five element design, uh, you get a lot of coma and astigmatism um, towards the edges. Now on axis, they're going to perform really well, um, but I mean, obviously if you're using a 35 millimeter eyepiece with a, you know, F6 refractor, you're probably going to be going for wide field views and on the edges, you're going to want uh, pinpoint views. So these probably aren't the best choice for fast telescopes. Um, however, if you're going to view the planets with a fast telescope and you use a 2x or a 3x Barlow, these will do just fine because you're, in essence, doubling your focal ratio or tripling your focal ratio when you use a Barlow. So if you use these with fast telescopes and a Barlow lens, they'll do just fine. Uh, that being said, um, F7, they should be okay. Um, a telescope that's F8 will be great. F10, even better. I mean, even if you're using a Max Sutov that's like F15, these things will excel. Uh, another thing I really like about the Urfil design is the eye relief, especially on the two-inch eyepieces. There is a ton of eye relief. Um, in fact, I mean, I know these are 70 degree um, apparent field of view, but when I go put my eye up in there, um, it just it gives you a really big field of view. Uh, I really, really like the two inch eyepieces specifically. The one and a quarter inch eyepieces do a really great job as well. The 20 has pretty good eye relief. Uh, the 15's okay, the 10's okay. It's not amazing eye relief, but I mean, it's a one and a quarter inch eyepiece. You're probably gonna be using these more for planetary observation anyway. Now, if you're new to the hobby and you've never used two inch eyepieces before, uh, they are fairly heavy and big. So you do need a pretty decent focuser um, to use two inch eyepieces. Now that being said, most high end telescopes usually can handle these without a problem or they even come equipped to handle them. Um, if not, usually just changing out the focuser for one that can properly handle two inch eyepieces is what you would wanna do. Uh, the last thing you'd want to do is have a big two inch eyepiece fall out of the focuser and be wrecked because you didn't have a proper focuser. All right, so to wrap up this review today, I just wanted to do a little bit of math and talk about true fields of view. Now, it's not difficult math. Um, to find the true field of view, you simply take the apparent field of view and you divide it by the magnification. To find the magnification, you take the focal length of the telescope and you divide it by the focal length of the eyepiece. So not too hard there. 
Now behind me, I have my Explore Scientific CF80 um, refractor that has a focal length of 480 millimeters. So um, let's just say I took the biggest eyepiece of them all here, the 35, and stuck it in there. Um, 480 millimeters over 35 millimeters is about 14. Now, 70 degrees over 14 is 5. So that thing has a 5 degree true field of view. That's pretty enormous. That's really wide field. Now, like I said, this refractor does have um, a little bit of a fast focal ratio, so the edges will have a little bit of astigmatism on them, but it's not terrible. Uh, the double cluster with that setup, the 35 and that telescope, is pretty amazing. Um, but let's say we wanted to use a telescope that gave us no astigmatism in the eyepieces, say um, my 2000 millimeter um, Schmidt Cassegrain. Uh, let's say we used a 20 millimeter eyepiece in that. Well, the math's pretty simple 2000 over 20 is 100, and 70 degrees over 100 is 0 0.7 degrees. So a Schmidt Cassegrain with a one and a quarter inch 20 millimeter eyepiece is going to have a 0.7 to true field of view, uh, degree true field of view that is. That's also pretty good for a Schmidt Cassegrain. Um, let's say we go with a 30 millimeter in the Schmidt Cassegrain. Well, 2000 divided by 30 is, um, well, 20 divided by 3 is 6.6, .6, so times that by 10, so it's about 66. So about a 66 uh, magnification there, um, I guess we could just round that up to 70. Uh, so 70 degrees over 70 is equal to 1. So the 30 millimeter eyepiece has about a 1 degree true field of view in a Schmidt Cassegrain, uh, or an 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. That's pretty good for a Schmidt Cassegrain, a 1 degree true field of view without any astigmatism. So that is the reason why I really enjoy these eyepieces. So that is the primary reason why these eyepieces are my primary eyepieces. Uh, a lot of people will bag on the Earthfield design, you know, they'll say, oh, these aren't six element or these aren't seven element eyepieces. I can't use them with my fast focal ratio telescopes. And I'll be honest, those, those six element and seven element eyepieces are awesome, but they're also a lot more expensive. And for me, I'm just kind of your average astronomer when it comes to observation. Um, I don't, I'm not out there every night. Um, I do want a good set of eyepieces, and these meet that for me just perfectly. So they're fully multi-coated. They're internally darkened. Uh, they give you an awesome true field of view with most of your average telescopes, and they're really affordable. So for me, these are kind of like a no-brainer, or at the time when I bought them, it was kind of like a no-brainer for me. And I've been really impressed with them over the years. They've um, stayed in pretty much new condition. I haven't really had to uh, clean them or do much with them, and they've just been awesome for me. So um, I think if you, you stick with 70 degree apparent field of view, you won't be disappointed. Obviously, if you can get higher than that, um, that's even better. Um, but for me, these work, and so that's why I really like them. Um, so that's my review of the Explore Scientific slash Bresser uh, 70 degree apparent field of view IP set. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, thanks so much for watching.